My guest tonight is a Pulitzer Prize winning author who has written his first children's book called Island Born. Please welcome Juno Diaz. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, quite an adventure for you, writing your first children's book. A lot of people know your work, uh, the Pulitzer for The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. And you are an author who is prolific. You are known for writing amazing stories that connect uh, not only to the immigrant experience, but to the American experience, because everyone comes here from somewhere. What made you go with the children's book? I mean, that's, that's quite a departure for you. Yeah, I, I have uh, a lot of godchildren. I've got two goddaughters who about 20 years ago, asked me to write them a book about them. They're Dominican, live up in the Bronx. And I said I would, and it took me uh, 20 years to, to wow. actually write it. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, they're like godparents themselves now. Yeah, they... man. One of them's like a lawyer. They're mad grown. They're... <laughs> I like the idea that she threatened to sue you. She's like, uh, I don't know if you noticed, yeah, you promised this and now you've been served. I think she's just embarrassed. She's like, man, it took you forever. You're lame, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I, it, it, it has paid off, though. You, you, you've written a story about a fascinating little girl. And uh, for those who've never read the book and for those who want to get into it, what is Island Born about, in your words? It's about a little girl who um, grows up in an immigrant community. She immigrated from the island before uh, she could remember anything. And uh, the book is about uh, her teacher asking all these students to draw a picture of their first country, because it's a school right. of immigrant kids. And she can't remember, and she decides to figure out uh, what this place that she comes from but she can't remember was like. Right, and it's funny that she has to remember a place that she never was, because in many ways, although it's a children's book, I feel like it touches on themes that we can all relate to, especially if you live in a country that you're not originally from. In the story, you've got Lola going around trying to figure out what pieces she has of the island uh, inside her. W was, was there some of the experience, was some of the experience inspired by, by the life that you've lived or the life of the people around you? Yeah, I mean, part of this has everything to do with how many people we know who carry other worlds with them. They live in one, two, three, four worlds. And right. in the United States, it's sort of you're encouraged to get rid of all those other worlds and to imagine that you only exist in one, but it's not true. And so I kind of wanted to write about a little girl who's surrounded by people who live in multiple worlds, trying to discover what it means to be able to join that, to have other worlds to draw upon. It's interesting that you say uh, people are you know, conditioned or uh, encouraged to forget the other world. You're American now. You know, this is America. This is your... Don't talk about the Dominican Republic. Being... This is, this is the only country that matters to you. Uh, recently, we saw uh, the, the phrase, um, a nation of immigrants being taken out right. of, you know, America's immigration, uh, the, the, the departments. When, when you see a nation of immigrants being removed, when you are an immigrant, when you grew up in a community that calls America home and appreciates that journey, how does that make you feel? Is that something that, that worries you? Is that something that, that scares you? Yeah, I mean, first thing, if they had removed that to just kind of give a more accurate description, America is a white settler colony nation, that would have been nice. But really, they did it to kind of... <laughs> no, really, they did it to sort of pursue this anti-immigrant kind of racist line. And look, man, uh, white people didn't just materialize in this hemisphere. Right. You know, all these folks, if you're not indigenous, you're part of this thing that we call immigration. And not wanting to recognize it not only erases the bloody history of why we're here, but also is so, uh, such a rank attack on the communities that have really powered this nation. When, when we go back to the, the story of Lola, you, you realize that there is this weird melding of two ideas in Island Born. And that is bringing a piece of your world into America and then having America influence what your world means and is. Did you find that happening in your life? Because you came over at a young age and then you became a U.S. citizen, I believe, at the age of 20. Like, how did you find that balance between going, I'm from the Dominican Republic, but I'm also American? 
you know, what helps is that so many people have gone through it. Right. You know, usually when you're experiencing, you think you're the only one, you're wrestling with the formula, you're like, how much can I be Dominican? How much can I be from New Jersey? But if you look around, you realize lots of people are wrestling with this. There's a lot of precedents. And what really helps is to think of it not as some weird, bizarre buffet where you only get one damn choice. That's like a sinister, sadistic buffet. How about you get to choose more than one thing? That right. you could literally be Dominican and from New Jersey, and there's no conflict. Fill the damn plate, yo. Fill the plate. <laughs> you know? Fill the damn plate, yo. Fill the damn plate. Thank you so much Thank for being on the so show. Man. Thank you for writing an amazing book. Oh. I'm Born comes out March 13th. Gino Diaz, everybody.